So, we are going to discuss about the EBSD today. So, I will discuss first the EBSD principles and then I will tell you how the integration of the EBSD with computer has changed the analysis of the EBSD patterns and then also the related aspects during the study of the deformation behavior and the texture study of materials. And finally, I will show you how the EBSD actually is done in the real microscope. EBSD has, has a long history as we look into the uh, papers about 90 years back. In 1928, Kikuchi from Japan first time observed Kikuchi patterns or Kikuchi lines and although it has been reported that he, he, he did not observe, he actually he postulated that there will be possibility of formation of Kikuchi lines in the electron diffraction patterns. And uh, in fact, Kikuchi went on uh, later on when TM was discovered and it was observed these lines do exist and they are basically due to the inelastic scattering of electrons. Then after about another 26 years in 1954 black reflected Kikuchi lines were observed in T m by Alam. Then in 1969 to 1979 saw a huge change in the in the uh, SEM techniques of EBSD. Three different types of diffraction patterns were detected. One is the SACP that is selector area channeling pattern the one which I have discussed in the last class where in fact 10 amps micrometer resolution was obtained by Joy et al at Oxford University. And at Bristol University Digni et al or Digni and others actually have found out the coastal diffraction patterns with a practical image resolution of 20 micron. Finally, VST came with 1 micron practical resolution by Venerables et al at Sussex University again from England. 1982-1984 saw the extensive usage of computer in indexing EBSD patterns and then from 1990 onwards we have fully automated EBSD systems with half transformation possible. Again major contribution came from University of EL, University of Tossel and RIS. And from 2000 onwards that is in the 21st century we have far very fast automatic pattern analysis systems. Obviously, I have not listed the, the improvement in camera resolution and camera uh, activities in this EBSD. So, now it is possible to have high resolution EBSD. In fact, people are doing in situ EBSD experiments which we will discuss and it is even possible to have high current EBSD. So, I will not be able to discuss all of them, I will discuss some of these during this lecture. Let us first look at the basic theory of EBSD. As you know the electrons from a source like tungsten filament or lab 6 filament or FEG in ACM they accelerated at a very high voltage 20, 30, 40 maybe 60 kilo volts depends on the microscope and allowed to fall on the sample surface. So, therefore, because of this interaction with the sample the electrons will undergo scattering one of the effect of this interaction is scattering and the scattering actually can create a point source of electron with all possible trajectories within the material. Let me show you example. Suppose this is a material and we have an electron and once the electron falls on a sample you can see it is going to create a point source here and from where the electrons actually can move in different directions. In the crystalline materials you have the atomic planes and these crystal planes can actually cause diffraction provided Bragg's law is satisfied. So, therefore, in crystalline material if you have number of crystal planes sitting on this on the inside the in the material and the electron falls and they can also actually get scattered. But in some cases if the crystal planes are actually oriented properly with respect to the electron beam so that Bragg's law can be satisfied we can have diffractions. And as I said in the last class, the, if we change the beam orientation, we can have the channeling 
of electron backscatter electrons at the same time the scattering of backscatter electrons inside the crystals and this can give rise to black and white lines and those are actually basically Kikuchi lines. So, this is basically the reason for origin of the EBSG the scattering or rather Bax's law dominated uh, or determined scattering of the electrons in the material. So, therefore, as you know all of you know because you have done the preliminary course on the, 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 the uh, characterization the Bragg's law EBSG occurs due to basically Bragg's diffraction and we know Bragg's law is given by 2D sin the regular n lambda everyone in this course will have idea about this particular equation which Bragg's Henry Bragg and William Bragg they discovered long back and as you know that if the electron beams with a certain wavelength falls or the lambda falls on a atomic plane of pressing D it can get scattered by the Bragg's law with an angle theta satisfying 2d sin theta equal to n lambda where n is basically order of reflection normally it is 1 in case of x-ray but in, in case of electron diffraction it can be more than 1. So, therefore, whenever the electron beams are getting scattered by the lattice planes if they satisfy the Bragg's law then there will be diffraction and then we will be able to detect the diffraction by using camera we will have the EVSD patterns that is the basically things. So, if we want to go even detail of that scattering from a single lattice plane. So, if you look at it that we know that each lattice plane what is can be indexed by H k L by Miller Babelis index or Miller indices gives rise to 2 diffraction cones let us see that how it is operates. So, suppose you have a crystal like this which basically cubic is shown like that and suppose this is the 1 1 0 plane in the cube and then if we have electron beam falling on this plane and then they are getting diffracted. So, this diffracted beam will create a cone of intense electrons these are all uh, can be easily borrowed from the x-ray diffraction anyone who have studied x-ray diffraction we know that even in x-ray diffraction camera also we have cones of reflections coming out because of the diffraction from a single crystals and then if we have a phosphor screen we can detect these lines with these lines actually called Kikuchi lines. So, this is basically from a single lattice planes now you have a multiple crystal present in a crystal in a sample. So, therefore, there will be different kinds of patterns or different orientation of Kikuchi bands will come different from the different planes of the crystals and then we can get actually a complex UVSD pattern. So, for ACM electron wave lengths basically they are much larger than the TM the opening cone angles are found to be close to 180 degrees this cone angle which is coming many times has been found to be 180 degrees a very large because wavelength is even larger here. So, 2 d sin theta and good n lambda if lambda is large then theta will be large because sin theta is proportional to lambda. Now, obviously, uh, one can uh, look at the scattering from the 3 d uh, lattice planes and suppose you have a one we have just basically 20 kilo volts electron beam striking the sample which is tilted to 65 to 75 degrees, degrees with respect to the beam and then we can think of like this suppose this is a silicon unit cell again uh, we have a cube, basically diamond cubic structure electron beam falling on this it can get scatter different planes will scatter and form these Kikuchi lines which is shown in this picture here and then on the phosphor screen the crystal structure at the point of incident of diffract the electron beam according to Bragg's law and each lattice planes basically you can look at it each lattice plane 110 or 100 type they are giving rise to uh, 2 sets of basically cones one set is this other set is this. So, whenever these 2 sets hits the phosphor screen they leads to 2 lines and these 2 lines actually call the Kikuchi lines. So, we can we are basically terming this as a Kikuchi lines basically we are naming them by the scientists called Kikuchi. So, in actual sense this is taken from uh, J Hedgling actual sense we can actually see this Kikuchi lines during the experimentations if we have a camera put inside the ACM. So, if you see this is a sample which is tilted with respect to the uh, beam at about or despite the normal uh, plane with at about 65 to 75 degrees Celsius and then the electron beam is falling like this this is basically schematic obviously one cannot image the electron beam by using normal camera electron beam is invisible. So, and then it generates this cone this cone actually has 2 
uh, two cones actually. So, they fall on this phosphor screen and screen produces two lines on the on the screen. So, this is the origin of the Kikuchi patterns or diffraction patterns and uh, in a two dimensional plane as I have shown here this is a crystal this basically creates these lines and uh, uh, bands and these bands has you will see the axis or meeting points these meeting points are called zone axis in the literature because they are like different roads coming from different places and meeting at certain points we know that it, it, there are junctions. So, these are actually called zone axis there is one here there are, there are four there are many more one there actually. So, one can actually index the zone axis using proper index scheme again using Bragg's law. Well that is very uh, what is called general one so that we can get a very nice refraction pattern but at the same time one must understand that all the backscatter electrons which are falling on the sample they may not produce the scattering which will be detected by the skin. So, therefore, there will be as only a small proportion of the electrons arriving at the phosphor schemes are diffracted. So, bulk of these electron beams are not diffracted they will undergo multiple diffraction and then getting absorbed into the material or may be coming out, but then they will not contribute to this Kikuchi bands. So, therefore, a pattern is always superimposed with the back on a background is just like x-ray diffraction pattern in x-ray diffraction pattern you have a background intensity coming from Bremsstahl lung and uh, the peaks which are coming from the uh, scattering uh, due to bags. Okay, so, therefore, this background needs to be subtracted otherwise we do not get a very nice pattern these are all actually done in a computer nowadays. So, one can uh, look at <coughs> in fact the backgrounds uh, diffraction can be subtraction can be done same way like any radiations and this is done here you can see that backgrounds are, are like this with respect to this this is very small intensity although, but still it has to be subtracted then to get obtained a very nice EVSD pattern. Not only that as I said in the beginning of the lecture with the advent of computer only fast computers this technique has taken a big lead in the material science research activities. So, images which are obtained or patterns which are obtained from the EVSD camera they need to be processed and as you see the unprocessed EVSD pattern is in fact does not contain much information. So, normally we take in uh, several EVSD patterns on a, on a, on a particular uh, case. So, if we select a point on the material and take several EVSD patterns from that and then we just integrate them. Once you integrate them signal to noise ratio improves and then we correct the background intensity. So, that the brand contrast increases and many cases images are compressed. So, get, get even better clarity of the bands. So, these are all routinely done in the computer where one is to need not bother about it while doing the experimentations, but you must know that these are required to obtain a good quality VSD pattern. Now, as I said zones or zone axis just uh, several, several two or three slides before. So, zone is nothing but a phase or planes in a crystal with parallel intersections that is what is shown here you can see that there are phases which are actually having parallel intersections and zone axis is a common direction of the intersection obviously. So, if I have a several planes there will be one direction which will which will be contained in all the planes that is actually called zone axis. So, in a wherever the EVSD patterns or EVSD bands or QG bands rather will meet in the EVSD pattern they actually can be defined as a zone axis and can be indexed using a proper scheme. Just to show you that as I said these are actually zone axis which are actually uh, taken from germanium syn crystal at 20 kilo volt acceleration and you can see that these are the actually zone axis marked here by red and they can be indexed which I am going to discuss after some time. So, uh, uh, the, this this zone axis are actually carry information about the orientation of the crystals in the, in the geometrical plane or uh, in the material. So, our orientation of the grains well that is actually done using half transformations half transformation provides a suitable technique actually for deriving the parameters of a straight line and that is actually bands positions in the EVSD patterns. Let us see how it is done basically EVSD pattern is nothing but x y plot as we look at it there is two dimensional x y plot. So, what we do is that we convert this x y into rho theta plot. Okay, so, if suppose we have three zone axis 1 2 3 or 3 bands other 
on the EBS department then the x is given by this one the, the horizontal variable and vertical one is basically y axis and then you can see that rho is connected to x and y and theta which is given by at the top of the, so the this picture x cos theta plus y sin theta equal to rho. So, we can convert this information from x y space to the huge half space that is rho theta space and we can get these bands because they are called huge bands half bands actually. So, lines in the patterns are can be converted into spots in the half surface and this is again done routinely by computers. We do not need to do anything in the real material analysis problem we go to the EBSD setup. So, the computational power is so much that these are done routinely in fact or online processing is possible also. So, basically real information which is gathered can be at the same time processed in the same computer by transforming this information from this x y space to half space. And then once you do this you have you have to detect the bands okay, and these bands are detected by using indexing scheme or oh, that is what is called EBSD pattern recognitions. So, EBSD patterns can be recognized or indexed using several schemes. So, as you know EBSD pattern obviously are unique to your specific crystal orientations even if you, have, you know the crystal structure of the material apparently it is basically depends on the how the crystal is oriented in the space or the grain is oriented in the space. So, this is a very unique thing about this. So, depend on orientation just like in a TM diffraction pattern diffraction events actually depends on the orientation of the crystal in the plane or in the space same thing actually is true for hair, but resolution is poorer here at the same time you can actually have much largest as uh, what is called area can be analyzed in it ACM as compared to TM because thin area is very small in a TM sample, but in ACM you have a large area which can be analyzed. Pattern is controlled by the crystal structure obviously, crystal structure means space group symmetry lattice parameter and precise compositions if it is an alloy one is known the precise composition within each pattern the specific bands or this pair of cones of diffraction represent the spacing of the specific lattice planes as we have already told you when we are discussing with the Bragg's law. Then EVSD pattern recognition compares these patterns of the bands with atlas which are prepared for the so many years of experimentations to index the crystal orientation required. So, therefore, this is again just like exit diffraction pattern analysis. We have the exit diffraction taking from a sample and then we compare with the at last which is available in the literature. If there is a new crystal then we cannot index. So, we have to go by again by the standard process of first knowing the crystal structure of the material lattice parameter and other things to index it. And then this information will go to the at last just like the ICDD database in exit diffraction this also a database. So, that can be used to uh, what is called index EBSD pattern. This are all databases are all given to each and every software which are used in uh, EBSD analysis. So, along with the software database are available. This is just like a WASP manual it is fully automated now as I just now discussed and uh, can be used to index. So, EBSD patterns let us see that this is taken from pyrites pyrites is nothing but FES 2 one can take metal also, but I am showing you as you see there is a zone axis here there in fact there one there one. So, many there is zone axis there there is zone axis there many. Okay, so, basically this is the major zone axis where the many 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 lines are or many many bands are meeting. Now, unique for the crystal orientation obviously and the composition for the pyrites can be more than 100 percent 100 degrees for total crystal projections that is you can basically obtain for a large angle of diffraction and crystal resolution is nowadays can be obtained of less than 1 micron possible. And some pattern details can also be obtained let me let us show you that a diffraction patterns on specific planes. So, that was this one is basically band. So, width of the band is basically 1 by displacing of the of the crystal or the particular plane of the crystal. This is the first order diffraction pattern okay, as you see here this lines and this is basically uh, second order diffraction the 
blue lines which are shown on the screen they are actually second order diffractions and the yellow ones actually first order diffractions just like in a TM diffraction pattern you have first order, second order, third order or first order and higher order diffraction patterns. So and this is a major pole axis as I just told because there are so many lines are meeting and there are points uh, the bands are meeting at this point and this is what is called holes high order Lawe Jones rings they are basically same like in uh, C bed or convergent beam electron diffraction patterns. In a convergent beam electron diffraction pattern you can get 0 order Lawe zone then first order second order or 0 order and higher order Lawe zones. So, this is a 0 order and this is a first order. So, that is basically a way to read the EVSD pattern. Now to give you some other example suppose this is the original pattern of some crystal and uh, now uh, it can be either manually index or auto index. So, auto indexing is done like this the way I shown you first the bands are marked by different lines and then they are indexed this is again computer done by computer as you see this is hexagonal crystal okay, this is in fact bismuth. So, the different lines can be easily marked. So, in every case as you see one inside there are two lines outside there are two lines so, this is the first order and this is the second order diffraction lines or QC bands and this is a major zone axis here this is another major zone axis and there are some minor zone axis also possible this is another minor zone axis here. So, this can be easily compared so, origin pattern will be matching with this then we are sure that we have done the indexing properly. So, to index we re require many things not only the crystallographic informations you need the SEM geometry that is beam energy specimen detector position and also orientation of the detector how the detector is oriented with respect to the crystal. Usually which is uh, these are all fixed by SEM beam energy sometime can be changed but specimen is also fixed by the by the user and detector position and detector orientation are fixed. So, only thing which you change which you can change actually beam energy and this will change the wavelength of the diffraction beam. Crystallography as I said just now crystallography is very important because you need to know the sample crystallographically sample that is the lattice parameter space group all these things are required to be known and they are actually input for any kind of crystal and diffraction characteristics to be also known that is relative diffraction intensities must be known. This is all obtained all, all given in the SCPDS or ICD databases of the any crystals. So, but I will show you some example how it is to be done and it can be calculated as I said. So, let us see how we can create that we can create this data. So, first let us suppose you have a crystal like aluminum which is a common metal you know it has a FCC crystal structure and with the lattice parameters like a b c is 0 0.0, 0 0.405 nanometers and alpha beta gamma this is gamma gamma is basically 90 degrees and the symmetry also to be can be obtained is a cubic the Lawe group is m 3 m space group is 2 to 5 or f 3 bar m face center m 3 bar m and uh, unit cell symmetry indices there are four atomic positions we know that. So, let us see the atomic positions there aluminum sits at uh, 0 0 0 that is occupancy 1 and aluminum again sits at the face center 0 0.5 0 0.51 also 0 0.5 0 0.50 sorry that is occupancy 1 and you can have 0 0.5 0 0.5 occupancy 1 and 0 0.5 0 0.50 occupancy 1. So, you know everything about the crystal by knowing all these stuffs the lattice parameter symmetry and the atomic positions that is all we need to calculate x-ray diffraction pattern also. So, how to do to index the EBSD pattern we must know the relative intensities as I said that is of the bands or QG bands or reflections in the patterns just like x-ray diffraction pattern we need to know the relative intensities of the diffraction peaks same thing done here. So, and most uh, approachable use is the kinematic diffraction theory which is very complex let me tell you in fact in TM uh, probably it has been discussed to you, but many cases it may not be discussed to you in that case there is no choice other than going back to the books and learn it kind of a diffraction theory is uh, uh, what is called routinely discussed in the TM books and this model actually calculate the structure factor for each of these H scale planes how it is done 
you know the intensity is basically square of the tuxor factor related to tuxor factor okay it's basically square of that and h f h k l is given by sigma g equal g goes to 1 to n f g f g is basically atomic scattering factor in exponential minus twice pi i h dot x g k plus k dot y g plus i dot j d where h k l is the plane indices and x y z are the lattice the atomic positions. This is the n is the number of atoms as you know and f g is basically scattering factor for each of atom which can be obtained from the any database. And uh, lattice planes and atomic positions I already told you. So, how do I create it by aluminum? So, let us do that. We know that for what are 1 1 1 there are 4 1 1 1 planes. So, this spacing is 2.338 with intensity coming to be 100 percent because 1 1 1 is the most dense atomically dense plane. So, therefore, it will have the largest intensity coming diffraction instance coming from this plane followed by 2 0 0 again it has there are 3 such planes with a 69.4 percent intensity and so on. One can actually go on calculating this for many many large number planes and obviously we need to do that. These are routinely done obviously for aluminum is very easy for other things other crystals complex crystal is not an easy one needs to use computers to do that. So, manually doing is very difficult, but all aluminum manually this can be all calculated. Well, that is actually way this crystal databases are created and then these are used to index the the EBSD the uh, the bands in the EBSD patterns and then obtain index those patterns to obtain the crystallographic orientations. So, once we know the orientation of the each crystal what do I do with it that is what is the basically important aspects one needs to know. Well, as you know suppose in a crystal there are many grains I can draw these grains here like this in a material. Okay. So, if you have so many grains and I know that definition from the grain tells us that each of these has separate separate orientations. So, what you need to know is from EBSD is that once you put the electron beams on this crystal or on this grain we can obtain the orientation of this crystal or the grain very easily by doing all these kinds of indexing these patterns from this uh, grain. Similarly, I go to the next crystal or next grain and do the same analysis and then this and then this and then this so on. And once we do all this analysis we can store this information how the crystals are oriented with respect to the physical space x y z and then once you know that we can basically do this orientation contrast imaging. So, we can plot this data on a micrograph to obtain the orientation information of the grains each grain. So, that is actually called orientation contrast imaging. So, that means the contrast of this image will vary depending on the orientation of the each grain of the crystal. So, in a polycrystal sample let us suppose uh, this is to talk about the emission signal orient how it is dependent on the crystal orientation in a polycrystal sample you have different different grains one is this this is another one another one this and the planes are oriented different differently on each of these grains. And now if we have electrons falling on each, each this suppose this particular grain and then the we can obtain the orientations just by doing this. So, we can basically give a grayscale image contrast on this okay, based on uh, whatever way we define the grayscale and then we can obtain from this we can make it darker depending on the orientation of this crystal and this is again can be done this way this way. So, that is how one can actually obtain this grayscale level it depends on the penetration and the emission also emission means how much vascular uh, diffraction is coming out from this crystal and detected by the camera. So, that is how actually this is this is very simple this is the simplest possible way of representing this you know orientation images on the crystal on the on the EBSD patterns or image from, from a large sample is done I am showing you. Let me show you some image electron beam is basically scanned in a any scanning electron microscope and sample is tilted. So, rather than positioning the beam on a point on a ABSD because we are scanning the beam. So, we put the different position a beam on the different position of the sample and there will be sparse scattered electrons with intensity determined penetrations and crystal orientation obviously and they are emitted towards the EBSD detector and this these signals are detected by silicon devices or the camera which is basically Peltier cooled camera and, and attached to the EBSD detector. 
and this is how it is done. So once you have all this information we can plot it you can see this is a very large area this is only 100 micron so that means this is approximately 10 times of that so 1000 micron is this length and this is approximately about 60 600 micron a very large area scanned and we can see different gray scale contrast on the image. So each of these actually showing the orientation of the quartzite grains on this on the sample. So this is you can see that this grain is darker so that means this is oriented very preferably with respect to the so and this grain is brighter and there are lots of dots they actually that means they are actually not contribute to the any information to the VSD pattern. So the, that means the force cutter electrons orientation contrast image or variation in crystal orientations the counter variation is only here qualitatively. So you can do that so let me just tell you that how this is done in automated or computerized system computer control movement of the electron beam across a sample can be done EVSD cat pattern can be captured from each point and that is what is shown so you can basically go to each point and capture the EVSD pattern and this is the pattern from one index this pattern by using a pattern recognizing software and then software as either crystal orientations in three early angles 51, 52, 53 and the phase information per pattern to a database for analysis. So I am not going to discuss about how these Euler angles are determined this is again not possible in the short span of time but one needs to know also. The important to run this manual visual check for solution before even we do this analysis because computer is basically black box whatever goes in it comes out. So if you put garbage in it will garbage will come out so one must actually run uh, one must actually see visually these patterns and be sure about it what you are saying is what you are obtaining and then do this indexing in a computer. This is again taken from one hour sample this is the grain orientation image okay and you can see this is 001 pole figure okay and you can see there is a predominant texture that is why these things are looking black those of you who have little bit knowledge about texturing you can understand and these grains can be shown to be oriented along different zone axis actually this uh, red is actually close to 001 and uh, blue is actually close to 111 and the magenta is close to 011. So therefore one can actually see this different grain orientation and obtain this inverse pole figure and then find out the where this majority orientation coming into picture as you can see largest cluster is coming here which is uh, at a different angle almost uh, like 90 degrees from the pole and some of these are coming at along 111 okay this is close to 111 those of you know little bit of this will understand. So therefore we can obtain the majority crystal orientation from these images which is very nice and the inverse pole figure of this will be this image. So you must have a little bit about how to generate this pole figures and how to study this pole figures and then one can actually obviously obtain uh, this kind of maps as you say this is 111 this is 110 this is 001 and this is actually called rolling direction transfer direction this is a very standard in a texture I am not going to discuss deeply in te or texture in today's lecture. So that can be done so using EBSD routinely people nowadays study the texture of the material texture means how in a multiple grain material crystals are oriented if there is the orientations of the crystals are haphazard then there is no texture if the orientation of the crystals are happening in a particular direction predominantly then we call this a texture material. So that can be obtained and depending on people can actually go on doing research on different kinds of materials because nowadays we know that the orientation of the crystals play so much important roles in dictating the uh, material behavior that is why texture material is coming into picture. So with this actually I uh, close and I am going to show you some example in the next lecture of texture analysis how they can be used really to obtain information of the crystal orientations and also to obtain the how the processing parameters can change this crystal orientations and this can be used for the day to day applications also very advanced applications. So which I am going to do in the next class.